Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You've reached yet another teen mom family reunion recap and excuse me if I don't have excitement in my mother freaking voice. The past couple of episodes have been very stressful for me, intense, and I'm praying to God that this episode is not as tense. Let's go right ahead and review this show. So Kate says that it's good to be reunited with Tyler. She was really struggling. She was able to process things with someone who truly understands what her and her mom go through. Jade says with Tyler there, it automatically makes her feel more relaxed and more comfortable, but it also makes her really miss Sean. And you know, as everyone's coming into the kitchen, they're greeting Tyler. And as they greet him, that's when they say their little thing, you know, about him. We have Kayla. Kayla saying that she thinks that Tyler is so supportive and he's great for Kate. After Kayla says that they're great for one another, she says that she wished that she would have had that with Luke. So then Macy of Tyler, here she is, saying that, oh, Ty's here. Here we are with a fresh start. I Kate says that she's glad Ashley and her mom are no longer there because, you know, they were the only two problems in the house that caused all the drama. And don't think I forgot, but what happened to that temper tantrum she had at the bottom of the of the last episode? I thought that we were gonna start that episode right here, but I guess we skipped the tantrum part and MTV for that. I just wanna say thank you. And then Jade goes on to say that she's trying to make the best out of the situation. She knows that's what Bri would want her to do. She's not dead. All right, Brianna's not dead. She's just home. God, relax, lady. So I thought it would be perfect for us all to go rock climbing. <laughs> Christy says, absolutely effing not. So Jade says that rock climbing is someone's holding the other rope while you're pulling. So Jade says the grandmas will be the ones holding the rope. So Kaya says that she's excited to do this activity with her mom. Her mom is her best friend. She loves her so much. Christy asks, where is Amber? And Jade says she's not feeling good. What the hell's going on with her? I think Amber, can you just get on a plane and go your ass home? Because why are you here? Macy says, I think it's good for her to be out here. And then Kate says, it's also not healthy to sit in your room because you isolate yourself. Macy says that Amber hasn't come out of her room yet and she really feels like this is an activity that she would love. She says she would just love for all of the girls to do this together. Macy says, but I'm not shocked. I mean, this is Amber. They're going to go rock climbing. Cheyenne says the first thing that pops into her mind. Indoor rock climbing, air conditioning, yes. Girl, why did you say it like that? So odd. But Cheyenne was highly mistaken because they're outside in the blustering heat. Okay, so apparently Jade is the new coach B. Whatever. So Jade is here explaining that this exercise is all about trusting your mom. So it's her exercise. So Jade volunteers to go first. Cheyenne is concerned about how the hell they're gonna climb rocks, her and Kaya with those long nails. Christy says, if this is what she has to do to show support for Jade, then she's gonna be rock climbing. And so the girls are learning how to rock climb and Jade is like how everybody's learning together, how it's so great. So Jade is having this mini melodrama because she doesn't know where to grab onto because of her nails. I guess Cheyenne was justified in worrying about you guys' nails. I mean, I guess you didn't think this through, Jade. I mean, you could have took a nail clipper and cut those damn nails off. I mean, what did you think was gonna happen for rock climbing? I mean, how did you even think that you were gonna be able to grab onto stuff with those long nails? Christy's down there trying to help her, telling her where to grab, and her leg hurts. I, I literally, my feet hurt really bad. So I gotta give it to Christy. Christy's really trying to help her down there telling her where to put her hand or whatever. Jade is over here saying she's ready to give up. She's about to cry. And Jade gets up the mountain. She gets the strength and climbs the mountain. So Jade says that her mom came through for her. She made it down, hip, hip, hooray. So Jamie is not feeling well because she's diabetic and her blood sugar is a little low. She's basically saying that she wants to leave and go back to the room. So Kayla says, if you want to go back to the room, I'll go with you. And Jamie says, it's okay, let's just wait it out and see. They're giving me food to try to stabilize me and see if I can get better. All right, so Tyler is up there. He's got to represent for the dads. Of I know you can do it, Tyler. I know you have it in you. And everybody else, Macy, Tyler, whoever else went up, they uh, climb with ease. So there's this MTV dude, I'm sorry if they posted his name, but I didn't see it. But he was asking Jamie, what, what medications is she on? And she 
took her phone to get the list. So Kayla says that she's worried about her mom. She really doesn't look good at all. She's seen this happen a couple of times before and normally it's a struggle to get her feeling back normal. Jamie's gonna go back to the room, take care of herself. She says that, you know, she needs to get out of this hot sun, go get something to eat and go uh, regulate herself. Kate is not playing with you. Kate is next up there after Kayla and Jamie decide to leave. April's over there with the support. I love to see it. Tyler's over there with the support. Love to see that too. Tyler says here that the way Kate and April are supporting each other is refreshing. April says that she thinks that she redeemed herself today because she showed that she'll always have her daughters back. And Kate, you did such a good job. I'm not even gonna lie. Caitlin says that her mom's support means a lot to her. And she truly believes that her mom is going to be a lot better this time around. Next up is Kaya. She says that her and her mom are codependent on each other. But Kaya says she's nervous. Anything could just snap. And then she got on these long ass nails. So somehow Kaya is doing it with these long nails. And she says she did a lot better than she thought she would. Is Kaya really up there twerking? Alrighty then. <laughs> Kaya says that she's fine with heights. So long as she's not focused on the heights. But she says she's more scared going down than she was going up. So we have the ominous scary music after the commercial break. And Kaya saying that she's scared she can't do it. So Tiffany says it was so relieving once Kaya got to the top, but when she went to go back down, she was scared. And Tiffany is down there being very supportive, saying that her and Liz have the rope. And she says she was scared to come down and she couldn't do anything about it. Liz came up there to help Kaya come down and Kaya saying to her, please don't let me fall. And Liz said, I got you. Kaya is making it down with the help of Liz. And she says her mom is so supportive and that gave her the, uh, that gave her the gumption. That gave her the ability to know that she could make it down. So everybody's done and Jade is saying how it was so much fun. And while she was up there and her mom was helping her, she was thinking, I don't know. Jade thanks Liz for being such a help and a trainer. Liz is telling them how great of a job they did, especially the ladies with the nails. Now they're back home. They're in here having a good old jolly time. And Cheyenne says, Macy, have you spoken to Amber? Macy says that she texted Amber that, you know, hey, do you want to come eat with us? I understand if you don't want to. And Amber basically just left her on red. Kayla comes in and everybody says hi or whatever. And Cheyenne asks, how's your mom doing? And Kayla says, once she ate something, she was fine. What did she say? Something's going on with her boyfriend and the kids. All right, so Kayla's on the phone right now with Luke and she says, I need your mom's number. He says to Luke, I need your mom's number. And he's saying, why? She's like, I'm pissed the F off. So Kayla says to Luke, are you going to send it to me? And Luke says, I don't know. Kayla says that she saw where Luke's mom is lying about a situation with her son, Isaiah, on social media. This happened when she was gone on another trip. Tiffany says she's inside and she's saying the son said that's Luke. Luke said that she spanked Isaiah for pooping on himself. I remember that. Freaking Kayla was pissed the hell off as she should have been. So Tiffany says the conversation aired last night. Y'all know, obviously, when they show these shows, as we can see, the timing. We don't know the timing. We don't know how they coincide. Now Luke's mother and sister are going on a rant. So they're going on a rant online i thought they were on a live i'm sure they're on a live somewhere going on a rant as well but this is some of the stuff that they wrote and you guys can pause to read so kayla asks where are the children going when you go to work luke says he doesn't know kayla says well that's a major effing problem because now i feel like i shouldn't be here so now kayla says that she's a little regretful now that she left the kids because now luke possibly take the kids to his mother so kayla is she yelling okay she she mad and she says to luke i don't give a f that a female is on social media talking crap what i care about is the fact that she knows what happened and is trying to cover it up she says that's what she has a problem with and kayla says it's triggering when all this stuff is happening when she's not home so luke yells what the f do you want me to do and kayla says check her your mama in check basically so luke says you don't think i did that already and kayla says clearly not enough Kayla says the way that Luke is acting is making her even more mad because he's acting like he doesn't care about the post. He says this is supposed to be our son and he's acting like he doesn't care. Okay, Kayla, you call his mom a bitch to his face? Girl, I don't know about that one. I, I don't know about that one. I don't like that one. Kayla says check the bitch. He she yelling like check the bitch. Like you don't call somebody mom a bitch. Okay, I understand y'all don't like each other. That's his mother. It 
but that's the most I've heard her say. Kayla is going off. Cheyenne and everybody inside is looking out there, as y'all saw. Cheyenne says, that's the most I heard from her this entire time we've been here. Kayla is screaming at the top of her lungs, and she's saying, it's about my effing kids. Don't hang up on me, you piece of S. And I guess Luke just hung up the phone on her. I mean, what else are you supposed to do with somebody yelling at you? I'm just being real. I mean, I, I, I'm on your side here, Kayla, because I got kids too. I'm just saying, what you expect somebody to do when you on the phone screaming at them? So Kayla says that seeing his mom say that Chastity, who is the sister, she never put a hand on Isaiah is bull crap. So Kayla says that he needs to basically check both of them because it's out of control at this point. That whole thing was out of control. You know, I may start a segment on here called late as hell reviews where i just review seasons that i did not review but since i'm late as hell they'll be called late as hell reviews i, I think about it so kaya goes over there to check on kayla kayla says that she's all right kaya says here that they're best friends and you know they pretty much check up on each other and make sure that each other's doing good and she says that she totally understood kayla's frustration kayla is slightly calmer and she's saying to luke it's a different situation for you because it's your mom and I'm sorry you have to deal with that. And Luke says to Kayla, you and the kids are my family. It's y'all before anybody else. And Luke says he doesn't know what else to say. Kayla says, I just need to know that the kids are not going to go over there, meaning his mom's place. Luke says, you have my word. So who going to keep the kids, Luke? I'm just curious. Who going to keep the kids if your mama not going to keep them? Y'all better find some outside baby. There's I mean, outside babysitters were such a savior. So Kayla says that Luke promised that he wasn't going to take the kids to his mom's house. He's going to take off work. Kayla says she just hopes that he sticks to his word. So Kayla says that she needs to go and they actually end the phone call off with I love you. So Jamie is here and she says that she's feeling better and she knows that Amber did not go with the girls today. So Jamie says she wants to go check on Amber. Amber doesn't have her mom here. Exactly. And if you didn't have your mom here, this was like a mom thing. She should have stayed her ass home. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to say, but yeah, let's just keep it simple. So Jamie says Amber looks like hell. Amber, y'all, you're supposed to be enjoying this time right now. What is the problem? So Amber says that she slept all day long, not surprising, and she's exhausted from everything that's going on. Well, the drama's gone, so I don't know what, what is going on right now, um, Amber. Amber says that she does want to be around everybody, but sometimes she just has to step away from the situation. What? So Jamie says if this is not a physical illness, I'm really worried about her mental because she doesn't look good right now. So Coach B walks in while they're talking, and Macy says, I'm happy to see Coach B. But I'm tired. What could she possibly have for us this time of night? So Coach B says they have a team building session and everybody is to follow her. So that's what they're doing right now. So they come outside and there is a big hole in hatchets. And Kaya's like, are we killing someone and burying them? <laughs> so Coach B says, obviously we're missing Brianna and Ashley. How do you feel about that? Kaya says that she doesn't think that any of them were expecting Brianna to leave. And Jade says, since Brianna didn't start it, I would have figured that she would still be here. Are we still forgetting that Roxanne started it? And if we're being technical, Roxanne started all of it. Roxanne came in hard and she went out weak like a lamb. She wasn't never hard. She was always weak, but her mouth. Macy says that she just hopes that everybody learns from it. Coach B says that she agrees. The healing process is all about forgiveness and growth. And Coach B says, without forgiveness in yourself, you cannot have healthy relationships. So the name of this team building thing is <laughs> Bury the Hatchet. And they're going to write down the issues and traumas that they have. And then they're going to literally bury these hatchets into the ground. So Kaya says, I don't know how we're going to fit all of our problems in this little baby ass hole. So they're going to go one at a time. And as each lady goes, everybody else is supposed to be supportive and listen. And Coach B says they're going to speak these issues and traumas out loud that they want to work on while they're there. Kayla says she's nervous about this stuff that this exercise is going to bring up. So Macy says that she wants to let go of the anger that she has towards Ryan. Macy says the anger that she feels is not for herself, but the anger that she feels is for Bentley. So she's not sure if she can bury the hatchet for Bentley. Macy says there's been times that Bentley wanted to throw in the towel with Ryan. And then they flash back to a scene where Bentley doesn't want to go see him. And Bentley says that he hasn't seen him in forever. And that would be a big jump to go from not seeing him to going straight to his house. Coach B asks to Macy, 
out of the flashback, she says, does it cause guilt within you? Macy says that yes, because of her choice in relationships. Macy says it just hurts everybody. Macy says everybody that loves her is hurt by it. So Macy wrote on her hatchet, realistic expectations and animosity towards Ryan. And Coach B says, you want to add that self guilt? And Macy says, sure thing, and starts writing it down. Kaya says, good for Macy. It's been a roller coaster, and now she has a teenager. So it's just time to move on. Kaya's up next, and Kaya says that she feels like she was a bad daughter to her dad. Kaya says that when you're a teenager, you pretty much are rebellious. Kaya says that she was ignorant of a lot of the things that her dad was dealing with. Coach B asks, what was he dealing with? And Kaya says, basically drugs. He overdosed. Kaya girl, these tears are making my eyes watery. Now I know I just got out the shower and it could just be shower water, but that is a sad story. Kaya says that she thought he was young. He's not sick. She thought that he would always be there. Kaya goes on to say, because she looked at him like he was a superhero. He was her superhero. So Kaya says it's hard and she doesn't think the void her father left will ever be filled. She says she just wants her dad back and she thinks about it every day. Kaya says she feels like a piece of her left when her dad left and it won't ever come back. She says she doesn't want that to happen again with her mom. She says that her mom is all she has now. She just wants her mom as close to her as possible every day because she's trying to learn from her mistakes. Kaya says that she feels guilty for not going to that football game that night with her dad the night that he passed away. He asked her to go. Kaya says that she's sorry for a lot. So Coach B has Kaya repeat some words to her dad of things that she didn't get to say. And Coach B leaves open for Kaya to continue. And Kaya says, I'm sorry for taking your presence for granted. And then Coach B says for her to repeat, Dad, I hope you can forgive me because I'm going to work on forgiving myself. And then Coach B gives Kaya a hug. And girl, you got my eyes watering, all right? I, I thought it was shower water, but my, my face is dry and my eyes are still wet, right? And the ladies here, they're, all of them are crying and their eyes are wet too. So Kate says, at that age, we're all selfish. The world revolves around us. She says that she really fell for Kaya. So Kaya is burying guilt and she writes it down in the hatchet, throws the hatchet in the hole. And Kaya says that she's still trying to figure out her emotions when it comes to her dad, his death, and the guilt that she feels about it. And she says she's just trying her best at this point. And everyone gives Kaya a hug. Next up is Jade. So Jade says, her thing is the why. Why does her mother continue to suffer with addiction? Why does she pick partners that suffer with addiction? And Coach B says, but is the why a part of you questioning yourself? Jade says not necessarily her, but there are all these things that are out of her control. And Jade says she can't beat herself up. So she's bearing why? Literally, she's gonna write the word why and she's gonna bury it on the hatchet. I mean, she's gonna put it on the hatchet and bury it. Kate says anger and anxiety in regards to her mom's addiction. Kate says that she wants to bury her anger towards her mom. Next is Cheyenne, she's burying self-doubt, which we all need to be doing, actually. Cheyenne says we're wondering if she's a good mom, if she's doing too much, etc. Cheyenne says it's a bunch of fear wrapped up into one. Cheyenne buries her hatchet. So, you know, Kayla just went through an ordeal on the phone and on social media and Kayla is up next. She's the last one to go, actually. She says that she's nervous about this whole exercise because she doesn't really talk about her traumas. Kayla says that she buries hers. And so she's gonna have to put herself in a vulnerable state and that's hard and that's scary. Kayla says that she wants to let go of the anger that she had for her mom because of the different choices of men that she had. Kayla says because of the different men she brought in and out. And Coach B says that's deep. Kayla says that her mom was married three times and then she had all these different boyfriends and it was a lot for her to be moving all the time. Kayla says it was more than just the men. It was the fact that her home was constantly uprooted. Coach B asks, how is your trust level with your mom because of that? Kayla says that she doesn't think it's really there. Kayla says that she doesn't know if she can depend on her mom to make good decisions for herself. Kayla says her mom suffers with severe anxiety and depression from her own past. 
She says when she was really young, she remembers her mom being in an abusive relationship and the only way her mom thought she could get out of it was to check herself into inpatient. Kayla says she was scared. She didn't know if her mom was going to come back. She didn't know if her mom was going to kill herself. And Coach B was like, why would you think that? And Kayla says, because that's why she went into inpatient. She was suicidal. So Kayla says that it's really hard dealing with a mom that you know is always on edge. And she says that she didn't want to lose her mom and she was scared. Kayla says that she feels like she's following in her mom's footsteps and she doesn't want her kids to feel that instability that she felt growing up. She wants her kids to feel safe and secure at home. So Coach B asks, what does stability look like for you? And Kayla says, our family not feeling alone, not feeling scared or uncomfortable, all the things that she didn't have basically. Coach B says, that's why it's important for you to bury those things so you can heal from those things. The abuse, the instability, the abandonment, because you have to do it for your kids. And that's what breaking generational curses looks like. Kayla says she can commit to doing that after being asked by Coach B. And Coach B says that that's definitely something that she wants to work through with her and her mom while she's there. So Coach B says, let's write down the anger that you have towards your mom. Kayla says she feels like she's been holding on to this anger for so long that she needs to put it to rest. She says she's learning to face her traumas head on. She can't change it, she says. What's done is done. All we can do is move forward and do better. So Kaya says she applauds Kayla for being so open and vulnerable because it's something that she's been holding in probably for a long time. So Tyler says, I don't know if they had a party in here or what last night, but it was a mess. Okay, so I'm gonna clean it. Kayla says after last night, she feels very vulnerable. She feels there's a lot of things that she's been holding in that she needs to let out and talk to Coach B about. So she can move forward because she's felt stuck for a long time. Kayla says that she really does want good tools and advice that she can take home and work through these issues. So Coach B steps up while Jamie and Kayla are out here and it's now time for their session. Kayla says she's really excited for the session with Coach B because she feels like she has a lot of unresolved issues they really need to bring to the surface then work through. Coach B says the mud pit was really deep. Jamie says, I wasn't giving, I wasn't giving Kayla a good role model even though I thought I was at the time. And she says she did better than how she grew up, but she didn't realize that she made Kayla a victim. So Coach B says that self-awareness that Jamie has is good. And Jamie says it's good, but it's painful. So Jamie goes on to say that Kayla feels like she highlights the negative over the positive in her and you know she says that's very valid so she needs she said I need to learn the tools on how not to do that to her and she says that she wants Kayla to feel better about herself she sees the depression and she doesn't know how to help so coach B says to Kayla living with mom eats you up and Kayla says the move back was supposed to be a very temporary thing and she feels like what is prolonged it is not knowing where Luke is gonna go is first of all Kayla, I, I know y'all whole story. I followed, I've fo been following you guys for years, okay? I really thought y'all relationship was gonna last. I mean, I did that, that team mom talk when you were pregnant. I know I'm talking to you. I'm talking to her. Like, it's like I'm talking to her. And I really thought, because I didn't know that he was cheating or whatever during that time, and all this came out in like, I can't remember exactly which season, but it, I really thought y'all were gonna last. Jamie says, I hate to bring this up, but Kayla hides things and Kayla agrees that she does. Jamie says that she covers for Luke's side of it. So Kayla says that she thinks her mom is trying to better her by calling her out on her stuff, criticizing her relationships. And she thinks that she just doesn't want her to repeat the mistakes that she's made. So Kayla says she found out that Luke slept with X and was done and she was done with the relationship. And guys, I swear to you, I watched this show religiously. I watched every episode of Young and Pregnant. I did not know that the girl that Luke slept with was an ex-girlfriend. Cause so Kayla says she found out Luke was cheating two days before she found out she was pregnant. Kayla says that she was like, okay, you cheated one time. I'm pregnant now. So for me, my pregnancy is the bigger news than you cheating. Let's try to work it out. Kayla says later on to find out that he was still cheating and with multiple people. And Coach B says, Kayla, Luke is a womanizer. He's sleeping with other women. He's sleeping with you. And then he still lives with you all. 
or with mom. And then Coach B says, what has you staying in a situation that dishonors you? And Kayla says, maybe I'm feeling like it's the best that it's going to get. And this is when she starts to tear up. And she says she doesn't know what to do. So Coach B says, you've repeated the cycle of mom in a sense of this re abusive relationship. And Coach B says, no, it wasn't a physical abusive relationship, but it was abuse in every other way. And Kayla says that she didn't see it as abuse. Luke doesn't hit her. Luke doesn't call her names. But Coach B says, but do you see the mirror? And Kayla and Kayla says, yeah. Coach B says to Kayla, it's because your mom didn't get into a relationship with a man who beat her physically, but verbally. Coach B says, you're in, a, you're in an abusive relationship. And Kayla says that she didn't recognize what was going on was abuse. Now she understands Coach B's point. Kayla says, the manipulation, the cheating, and constant lying. And Coach B says, Kayla, what do you want? Not what's normal, but what do you really want? Kayla says she wants a healthy relationship and she doesn't think it will ever be with Luke. She knows that, but it's hard for her to let go. So Coach B says, you have kids looking at how you're treated. Well, she said you have a daughter that's looking at how you're treated as if, I don't know, a son doesn't matter. Like, why y'all keep saying especially the daughter? Sons are important too. I'm not saying y'all saying they're not important, but it's just as important for a son to, to not, see in, not see his mom being abused as much as it is for a girl. Coach B says to Kayla, she wants Kayla to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Luke if separation is what you want. What does he need from himself and you and whoever else supports him to be on his way? And then you figure out, Kayla, what you need to do to get on your way. Can you commit to this plan? And Kayla says, yes. Kayla says, after talking to Coach B, the best thing for her and Luke is to split and focus on their kids and focus on co-parenting. She wants to set a better example for their kids, especially her daughter. See what I'm talking about? Kayla says she doesn't want her kids witnessing a toxic relationship and thinking that it's normal. And she doesn't want to project the pain her mom has projected on her onto them. She says, by speaking positivity and love, hoping that will help break the cycle that we've unfolded unfortunately started. Coach B asks, what help do you think mom can do? How can she help you actualize and put this plan of action into motion? And Kayla says, try to be more positive. And Coach B says to Jamie, we've got to gas her up so that when she starts the engine, she'll be put in drive because right now she's on empty. Jamie says, Coach B just laid it out and she thinks it was good for Kayla because it wasn't her saying something and they need to keep working. But now they've got some tools watching what she says and trying to be more positive. She thinks they're going to do great from there and that is the end of the therapy session hugs hugs smooch smooch wah wah and they're done so y'all can read the words on the screen macy is texting amber and amber's like i gotta tell you something well it turns out everybody amber says that she has covid I put y'all at risk i don't understand how you think amber i really don't now kayla has tested positive for covid everybody i'm not gonna sing praise party by karen clark sheard and put the word COVID party instead. I'm not gonna do it even though I want to. It is my genre. I love gospel music, but <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. But apparently, Kate also has COVID. April has COVID too, y'all. Says that Kate planned this whole trip and she's down for the count. So what does that mean? for the trip girl y'all already had a good trip all y'all can go home and we'd be good right now i'm over this I'm, i swear to god i'm over it i am done with my review i think a bunch of videos coming for y'all okay i'm not even gonna tell you guys just subscribe to me okay because 95 percent of the people that watch this channel for some reason are not subscribed to me i put up good content or at least i think i do anyway guys thank you so much for watching my channel make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye